Um, all right. So um, again, thanks for uh, thanks for joining. And uh, first of all, I want to say a happy new year, and I all wish you a great uh, 2021. I'm sure that we have all learned a ton from uh, from 2020, and uh, personally. I really look forward to uh, 2021 and I really hope that it's going to be a, uh, a great year and I'm going to apply that everything that I've learned in 2020 uh, and uh, in the years before as well. And I'm going to apply everything that I have learned into the new year and uh, personally, I'm going to make it the best year, um, best year ever. And my goal for you is to do, um, to, um, to help you accomplish the same thing uh, as well. So I'm just going to take a quick glance if everything is working and it seems uh, like it is. So let's uh, let's jump right in. So the um, the topic of this session is why time management doesn't work and what you should do instead. And the reason why I chose this topic is because this is something that I um, am really passionate about. And for those who don't know me, um, I'm uh, Christoph Mainz and I help entrepreneurs to become more profitable, to make more revenue by working more effectively and efficiently. And I've helped a lot of entrepreneurs over the last, um, over the last years, uh, a lot of um, um, non-entrepreneurs as well. And the one of the first questions that I always get is is similar to the lines of like, what is your best advice to to be more productive, or what is the best app, or what is the best time management technique? And I <laughs> I always have to disappoint them because disappoint them because there is no best time management app or best time management technique that is able to help them and. Actually, the uh, the question the, that they are asking is most often of the time not the best the best uh, question as well because they are asking for time management techniques. They want to get better at time management, and I get it. A few a year, years ago, I was in the same situation as well. I really was not productive. I was not able to to focus. I procrastinated. <laughs> a whole lot and I really wasn't able to in the morning I started with a to-do list and in the end I ended with the in, in the end of the day I ended with the same to-do list uh, with with probably a couple of things added as well and I may have been busy with one thing or another but I always was um was my, my focus was was scattered and I always was working on 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 the wrong things and that is when I have found out that time management was not my problem. I wanted to be more productive and I was always looking for more time management techniques for to get better time management, to, to, um, to be able to prioritize better. The, uh, and I was trying all kinds of things. I was trying the, the Pomodoro technique and the, the, the urgent uh, versus important matrix and uh, scheduling all my, all my tasks on my calendar. It was, I was doing, quote unquote, I was doing all the right things. All the things that you read on blogs and books and, and all the advice I could get, I, I thought that I was doing all the right things. But the problem was that I was focused on time management. And actually time management was not my main, my main issue. So um, let me show you the, the next slide here. So what I have found is that, um, that there are four crucial elements to becoming more productive, to get the most out of yourself. And those are, um, and you can see them on the screen here, but those are um, uh, mindset, uh, energy, uh, time, and attention. And what I would like to do is go a little bit deeper into the, these four aspects. And then the title of this, uh, this session will make a lot of sense uh, to you. So the mindset part of productivity 
is all about having the right mindset. But what does that mean? For me, having the right mindset means that you are able to, to cope with negative emotions. And personally, I am or I was a chronic procrastinator and I still get these urges, but now I have learned the skills to deal with this. But if you are a procrastinator or a chronic procrastinator, you will uh, recognize this, that um, whenever something gets hard or something is boring or there, there is something that doesn't feel right or it feels hard or you don't know what the next step is, then you tend to procrastinate. And what it all boils down to is your ability to cope with negative emotions. And for a lot of people, and I would say even say for most people, procrastination is, a, um, is an avoidance of these negative emotions. So we, we do something else to, to escape from the negative emotions, but it does, uh, in the long run, it, it harms us and, and we know this. But but still, this is something that we are we are still doing. So that is what the the mindset and emotional part of productivity. That is why this is so uh, so important. And um, I'm going to give you a, a litmus test for for all of these um, areas as well, so that you can really find out which of these areas that you um, can find the most growth in. And the, the litmus test for the mindset slash emotional category is, are you able to do your work even if you don't feel like doing it? If the answer is yes, then, uh, and you, you really want to, um, to get better at uh, productivity and well, more effective and efficient, then probably the mindset part is not the issue, but if you said yes, if really, if this resonates with you, that you are not able to do your work, even um, uh, if you are uh, able to do your work, even if you are not feeling like it, if that is not something that you can, uh, that you are able of, then you really need to work on fixing your mindset and really need to work on finding ways to cope with negative emotions and to not channel it into uh, procrastination, but to le really learn how to deal with this. And then uh, to um, uh, if you do this, then your productivity will skyrocket because this will be the, um, the, the click that you, that you make and the thing that you were uh, missing. All right, on to the next, um, the next category. And this is all about energy. And energy, um, there are a couple of categories of energy, but like the main, um, the main reasons that, or the main um, aspects of productivity um, and energy are physical energy and mental energy. So physical energy is, Kind of obvious, but a lot of people tend to ignore this. But um, if you don't have enough sleep and you feel tired all day, there is no way that you will be able to perform at your best. That uh, there's no way if you are if you wake up tired, there's no way that you will be able to do the best work that you want to do. And uh, mentally, it's a, it's a very similar uh, very very similar thing. If you are um, if you are occupied, if um, if something uh, if something happened, let um, to, just to give you a random example. Let's say uh, your um, your girlfriend or your your wife has uh, has just left you. They, she has broken up with you, and um, she, this was um, uh, in the morning. Will you be able to do productive focused work in the afternoon? The answer is no, you are occupied because this, this just drains your, your mental and emotional energy. And the same is for, uh, for be the ability to focus, but that is actually something that I will, uh, will get into um, later as well. 
because um, because focus is, is is a whole other topic. But this this is focus is also a kind of energy. And anyone who has done uh, productive work for an extended period of time has noticed that at one point you you just feel drained, but you have physical energy. If someone would ask you to go on a run with you or to go on a bike ride or, or whatever it is, you would say, yeah, yeah, okay, I feel up to it. And actually it would do you good because it's a different kind of energy that you are, um, that you are using, right? But if they would ask you to do like a, a one hour quiz, like a really intensive quiz that you need to focus on, you would, you would feel like, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not really feeling up to this because I'm, 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 uh, I'm mentally drained, right? So there are different kinds of, uh, of energy. And if you are lacking of energy, this may very well be the linchpin that, um, that could skyrocket your uh, your productivity, and I probably should have uh, mentioned this in the in the beginning of this this task. But these four elements, this is like uh, the, the chain. And what my advice is for you is to find the weakest link, and the weakest link is probably, and I would say this is true for ninety five percent of of you that uh, the weakest link is what you should focus on. So whether it's a, a mindset and emotions or energy, time or the ability to focus, um, if one of these areas is lacking, if you, if you <laughs> focus, <laughs> pun intended, if you really work on that, then your productivity will skyrocket. And that is where the biggest gains are for you. And you can repeat this exercise again. So let's say, for example, that uh, energy is a um, something that you uh, need to work on and you fix your sleep schedule and then your energy get better, you get more productive. Then you can do the same exercise again. And you look at the four elements and then you um, do the uh, do the litmus tests again the the four uh, the four litmus tests and um, and then you find out what your uh, what then is your weakest uh, weakest point. So um, that was just in uh, uh, something in between that I really wanted to mention. So getting back to energy, the uh, litmus test for uh, for energy is and uh, I focus mostly on physical energy right now. Uh, one because um, time is limited right now for this uh, for this session, and second is that um, this is something that a lot of people are uh, are struggling with uh, with the most. So the litmus test for um, having enough energy is um, after waking up in the morning, could you fall back asleep at ten or eleven a.m. And a uh, add-on to that or a second uh, follow-up to that is, can you function optimally without caffeine before noon? And if the, question, if the answer to either of those questions is no, that means that you really need to work on, having, on, um, on increasing your, um, your physical energy and probably your mental energy as well, because it will really suffer. You will not be able to perform at your best if you are if you are tired. Just uh, just simply that. All right. So moving on to the um, to the third, and this is actually the uh, the part of time management. And I know the, this uh, uh, this um, the title of the session was forget time management. This is what you should do instead. Um, but this was to, uh, what I wanted to prove is that yes, time management is a very important part of being productive, be, of, of uh, working more effectively, of working more efficiently. But for most of the people, this is only 10% of the puzzle. It is an important part. And if you are struggling with time management, then that would be, um, the reason why you're not at uh, at your top productivity, why you're not at the top of your game, right? So don't mistake me. I'm, I'm not I'm not saying that time management is not important at all. That's not what I'm saying. It's just that most people want to be more effective and efficiently, 
by uh, by getting better at time management, but there's a whole lot more and you have to look at it holistically. So um, for uh, for time management, the, uh, the litmus test there is um, really that you know how to use your time in an efficient manner. And the, um, the litmus test here is, do you know what your priorities are and are you able to finish your tasks on time? If the answer is yes, focus of one of the other three areas. If the answer is no, if you are not able to, um, to prioritize your task, if you do not finish your task on time, then it does make a lot of sense to really uh, focus on the time management aspects of, um, uh, of, of productivity, so, uh, so to speak. And then the, the fourth element, and uh, uh, I don't know if you have uh, joined uh, Nir Ayal in, uh, in one of the first sessions for, uh, for today. He gave, a, he gave a great talk on uh, how to become uh, more, indistract how to become indistractable. And that is what the fourth element is all about. It's about the ability to, to focus. And there are, in the, the, the age that we are currently living with, we are bombarded with distractions and it's so easy to lose your focus. It's so easy to get distracted and to, um, to just feel like you are doing busy work, but is doing busy work really moving the needle forward? And for me personally, um, I noticed that it, that it wasn't and I felt kind of productive just to give myself like like this this good feeling that I was being busy but when I did a uh, um, a review when I reflected at the end of the week for example and I reflected on the, on, on my week I really didn't feel like I moved the needle and I really didn't feel like I was focusing on the on the right things and then when I decided to really focus on the, on the, on the right things I felt that I was not able not even able to uh, to really focus for uh, for half an hour or for 15 minutes. And what I have found is that the ability to focus is really, uh, this is something like like a muscle and it's something that you can train. And I, uh, I was really glad when I, when I found this out because I, I, I personally thought that um, I just wasn't able to, to focus and that, that just it doesn't it didn't work for me. But um, what I found out, and I found this for my um, for myself, but also for my uh, my coaching clients, is that this really is if, um, a muscle that you can train, and it's really something that you can get better in. So it's um, it's simple, but not easy. But if you are able, if you are not able to focus, the simple solution is to really train this and to really start focusing as much as you can and to remove as much as uh, distractions from your life uh, as possible, um, especially in your, in your work environment, to remove uh, as much distractions as you can and really to start to train that focus muscle. And the only way to train a muscle, just like working out in the gym, is to really do the work, really start focusing. Commit to yourself if you're able to only focus for 10 minutes. And believe me, I was there. If you're only able to focus for 10 minutes on end, set a timer for yourself for 12 or 13 minutes and really focus on just one thing. Focus on just the task at hand and remove all distractions. And I, uh, I promise you, over time, you will get better and better and better. All right. Okay. So... Um, this is, um, these are the four elements that make off, uh, make up, uh, productivity. Um, I'm, uh, heading into the, uh, the Q and A right now. So if you have any questions, please, uh, leave them, uh, leave them in the chat and I will, uh, will, um, will get through them, uh, in, uh, in just a minute. I just wanted to say, uh, and this is a really short time. <laughs> I could talk for this uh, uh, about this for hours. But if you um, if you like this kind of content and if you want to make 2021 your uh, your most efficient and effective year ever, so that you have more time to do the things that you love to do, 
to have more time with your family, to have more time to um, to um, to to spend on your hobbies. If you want to learn a new instrument or new language, if you want to be more productive, so you can uh, enjoy life to the fullest. If that is your goal for 2021, then I invite you to join our free. Um, a Facebook uh, group. We have uh, a little bit over 800 members uh, already, uh, and you can do this by, um, by going to productivelife.com slash community, which is also on uh, the slide. All right, so uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Uh, we have a little bit time left, uh, I think about five minutes for, uh, for Q&A, so I would be uh, really happy to, uh, to answer your, uh, your questions. Okay, let's uh, let me have a look here. Uh, let me put full screen now. Actually, I will keep the link there for you. Okay, so um, Sunil Karan question: I tend to browse internet on the same topic instead of sitting on topic, and therefore taking a long time. How to resist this temptation? Okay, so. Um, if I understood your, your question uh, correctly, um, what I have uh, found is that um, this is like uh, like a researching uh, kind of thing, right? So what I have found is that I personally tend to uh, use uh, research as um, a kind of form of procrastination. And this is something that I call productive procrastination because you are doing something that is from the outside, it looks productive because you are doing something, you are researching, you are working towards your um, your end goal, but it is not the, the one thing that you should be uh, be doing. So if you really want to, um, to to limit this, like the best thing, the, the best advice I could give you was uh, is to use a timer and uh, just uh, say for yourself, okay, I, know I need to research uh, this topic, I expect this is going to take me uh, 15 minutes, for example, and then you set a timer for 20 minutes, just give yourself some space. And when the timer goes off, then you stop researching. There are also uh, apps like, um, for example, uh, Freedom, the Freedom uh, app, and that is uh, an app that you can, uh, um, a program you can install on your computer and your, um, your, your smartphone, your, um, your tablet. And excuse me. And that uh, that app will also limit uh, will help you to to limit your uh, your time on on these kind of sites. But um, that is more like of a crutch. And I really like the app. I use it myself. But this is something of an in between uh, solution to really help you to uh, to learn yourself the skill of limiting uh, this uh, this kind of things and limiting these kind of uh, of distractions and i know it's really easy once you get into it and the, uh, you get on one side and you click through to the next and uh, especially um, if you have a daunting task in front of you then doing the research and just reading websites and articles even if it feels productive this is something that's uh, that's a very tempting uh, activity as uh, as procrastination okay so, um, oh, San, San Yam Sul has a really good uh, question here. How can I prioritize tasks on different domains, health, career, social, etc.? Okay, so the key there for, um, <clears throat> sorry, the key there for focusing on, uh, on different uh, priorities or different projects or, or uh, whatever is to really um, focus on, uh, on habits. So to really distill, um, so let's say, I, I think, okay, so one of the, uh, so the, uh, the three uh, examples here were uh, health, career, and, and social. So for example, a social habit could be to send one text a day to, uh, to a friend and to create that habit. For health, it could be to, uh, to create a habit of working on a, um, uh, working out on a on a daily basis or uh, every um, every two days uh, something like that. But if you distill this into habits, then it's much easier to um, 
first of all, it will take you a lot less effort. And second of all, it will be much easier to uh, make progress on uh, on these different areas in your life and to not go all in on one area and uh, um, um, while while rejecting all the uh, the other uh, other areas, right? Okay, so uh, time is almost up. Just one more uh, question here. Uh, Lori Weingarten, could you repeat the litmus test for attention? Okay, so I'm going to repeat the, uh, the four litmus tests uh, here. So for mindset, um, the litmus test is, are you able to do your work even if you don't feel like doing it? For energy, the litmus test is, after waking up in the morning, could you fall back asleep at 10 or 11 a.m.? Or can you function optimally without caffeine before noon? The litmus test for, um, for time management is, do you know what your priorities are and do you finish your tasks on time? And the litmus test for uh, the ability to focus is, uh, are you able to pay attention on your tasks for long stretches of time without being distracted? All right. Okay. How do I find my passion? Uh, well, that, that's uh, that's that's a great uh, great question, and that's not something that I I can answer in in, in just a uh, a quick minute. Um, there is one thing you can do um, to really close, uh, to focus in on your, your passion. And I must say, this is a really great question because this is the basis for, for everything, right? If you don't have your passion, if you're not motivated, then everything just falls flat. So you are right, uh, asking the, 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 uh, the perfect question. So uh, kudos uh, to you on that. But um, to, to get back on um, on the question about um, on finding your passion, um, a great exercise that I have found is to um, to write your own eulogy and to really think ahead. Take uh, take fifteen to to take half an hour. Just sit down in an isolated place where you can just be alone with yourself. Uh, take a piece of uh, pen and paper with you and um, really reflect on what would you want your friends and your family, those dear to you, um, what do you want them to say about you at your funeral? And I know it's a little bit dark, but this is such a powerful exercise. And I really encourage you, if you um, have not found your passion, what do you want your family members and your friends to say about you at your funeral. Take your time and this this is, uh, again, I, I could talk a whole hour about this, so, but if I would give one tip about finding your passion, that would be it. That is like, in my opinion and in my experience as well, this has been the most powerful exercise um, that you can uh, can do. There are a lot of other things you can do as well, but if you do this exercise and if you really focus on uh, on this and uh, you journal about it or you just write it down or or you you meditate about it or you think about it, um, that is really uh, really a most uh, the most powerful uh, exercise uh, for this. All right, so uh, time is up. I don't want you to keep uh, away from. Uh, I don't want you to keep away from the other sessions. I want to respect the uh, the other authors as well, uh, or the other uh, coaches as well. And I really, if you found this helpful, I really I hope to welcome you in uh, in our community. And uh, looking, I look forward to uh, to um, to have a chat with you uh, there as well. Okay. Uh, thanks for everything. Uh, thanks for joining again. Uh, wishing you a great, uh, great day. And most of all, I uh, wish you the best for 2021. And I really hope you have a productive year.